Right, on today's episode, we have Sean. This is a, I think this is a fantastic episode. I got quite a bit out of this episode too. I think a lot of people will, personally, because I guess, especially because we broke, we went down, I guess, male culture. I guess the things that are happening now and the things that we could add on, I guess, to better, to go in forward better in the, the future. It took me a while to get that out. But yeah, I think it's a lot important. I won't go too much in depth in the intro, but it's definitely something worth watching or listening to. But also to make sure you go check out his Instagram page, The Modern Bloke. He posts some fantastic stuff on there. Make sure you check that out for me, guys, and hope you enjoy today's episode. Sweet, man. All right, welcome to the show, dude. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having us on. That's all right, man. Um, let's start with your story. How did... I guess, how did you start to come open up, I guess, especially in the men's sector or masculinity of, I guess, when you start off and started opening and started to dive down that rabbit hole? Um, interestingly, so the first time, I guess, uh, I've always had a curiosity about kind of uh, like emotional intelligence with men um, because I grew up with a sister, an older sister and a mum, um, so in a very feminine environment. Um, and then it wasn't, you know, and then I started kind of like hanging out with mates, go, you know, going playing footy, playing cricket and all that. And then kind of was then exposed to kind of like the male side of the side of things. So I've always kind of had an interest as to why that happens. And, um, then really the first time was around men's kind of issues or mental health was at university. Um, and I was on a, um, uh, like the student council and my job was the events manager. So I was doing um, basically Van Wilder, easiest way to describe, it. you know, great gig for the last year and a half, two years of uh, university. Um, and I noticed that I had a men's officer, uh, sorry, a women's officer, an environmental officer, a queer officer, an overseas students officer, um, but there was no men's officer. And that was kind of, just, you know, raise questions with me Um, and being open and just, you know, and and that I had a lot of guys that would come up to me and talk about their issues. And, you know, um, I was, my job was to welcome people. So, you know, people felt connected to me and I was just raising the questions and saying like, why don't we, you know, Um, and there was no real answer. Um, And a lot of it was, oh, men don't need it. Um, Or, you know, they're not a minority. We don't need to support them. Um, Which, are understandable questions in that environment or answers at that time in that environment. Um, But my kind of, because I studied marketing, I said, well, if I was a guy coming here, my, and you've got an environmental officer, you're saying that you care more about the environment than men uh, or the me type thing. And you know, that, that just that kind of thinking always started from there. Um, Probably had about 10 years of uh, after um, getting a, we got a men's officer in and, and stuff and had about 10 years of just uh, analyzing and thinking and the movement kind of things started to build a lot more, but then also because of people didn't have anyone to talk to. Um, it was more of, you know, universities are like a wider society down smaller. We saw, you know, suicides going up. We saw all these I- issues that kind of like were the event of that culture 10 years ago coming out of that. Um, and yeah, I just, I couldn't stop, thinking about it, I'd done some personal stuff and gone through some personal stuff. And um, yeah, my, my was about a year and a half ago, two years ago, it was kind of, you know, why is anything being done or, you know, what can be done? And it was a, just got to being, don't complain, do, you know, don't complain. Why isn't anyone doing anything? If you're not going to be, the, you know, the one that puts your hand up and at least tries something as well. Um, so yeah, started, got the, um, my girlfriend at the time, now fiance, she was just like, yep, go for it start doing it and um i also was always very vocal um about men's mental health um about my own issues and probably and supporting and and speaking up for men um which would get backlash honestly like um especially you know five years ago um to ten years ago when there wasn't as much support behind their encouragement um you know why are you talking about men's issues you know women have better uh, these issues or you know, whatever parts of society. And, and I fully agree and, and jump on board with those issues. Um, but then they didn't see the people that would then message me privately 
hey, mate, I saw you talking about this. I'm actually struggling with that too. Or you have had that issue too. So I thought, you know, let's bring it out in a bit more public. So so. It's real crazy that you say that too because I've, I came really open about this stuff probably about, oh, I'll go about at 10 months to a year ago. And I thought it was going to be a female kind of dominant thing that's going to like message me and, you know, be, I guess, you know, that you're kind of helping. And it was, I think I had one female message me or about two. And it's just mass majority of men. Just, it, it just come out privately and yeah. Well, that's that, that's awesome, and that's that's kind of the movement that you want because of uh, I've learned a lot in the last two years. Um, like you know, I, I I knew knew a lot and kind of like, well, I had my own thoughts, but just you know, my learning curve is massive. And um, one of the ones that I've learned with guys is that um, I've given them a lot more credit as well. That a lot more individuals are thinking and and, and concerned about the same things they're just probably not being vocal and they're seeing a couple of people kind of stand up and get shut down and um but what i've kind of found is that what and of the things vulnerability breeds vulnerability and the moment that you walk the you open up and they see someone else kind of like open up they can then go okay well this is a space that we're welcome to open up to and yeah you, you get a lot of feedback um and, and in return for that um i get so i've got so many amazing female um, followers and supporters that engage because um, they can genuinely see the work um, that we're doing and, you know, and they agree with a lot of um, the stuff as well. It's weird too. Cause like if you're improving men's life, you're helping improve females life and it's vice versa. Yeah. Well, that's it. And that's one of the, one of my motivations. Um, I, I look at it and go that um, by helping guys in, in general in society, then, you're going to improve society um, by doing this. It's going to reduce domestic violence issues. It's going to reduce violence in general in society, reduce drug and alcohol abuse, um, you know, increase productivity in, in, in society. So um, that's, and a lot of people just get around that because I think it's going the right way. Um, I've got in um, my pin post in Facebook group that, you know, this isn't a men's rights activist group. There's no, you know, the, the, the bad kind of side of it. Um, there's no room for that. There's no, I, I've got no time for it. Um, and one of the reasons for starting the modern bloke is I was concerned that that was what was controlling the narrative from guys. And then anyone that was talking about, it, you know, men's issues or emotional intelligence, whatever, it was quite negative towards women. And I'm just like, that's just giving us a shit name. Um, and yeah, so many women and men just support it, which is great. Which so that's kind of an amazing like thing, especially like being open, especially back then, like 10 years ago, because even now being open, I still get made fun of a lot for it. But then there's something that I've, I came up, like thought about the other day. It's like where men make fun of this openly, but want to talk about it privately. Yep. I, I get into that and that's kind of my, um, where I'm going more with the modern bloke as well. Um, one, one of the things that I always talk about because I studied at university is um, cultural change over generations and um, things like uh, uh, social conditioning and how to build cultures and stuff. And same thing is it's just, it's just a culture that we're in that we're all victims of um, and there are strengths of it. However, um, yeah, you know, I always say that some of the bad parts of the culture people just do because of that's just, they, that's just what they've grown up with. Um, and it, and it's a habit and I'm guilty of it. Um, you're guilty of still doing it now because you fall into it, but it's just about being aware of it. Cause yeah, as you said, you know, taking the, and, and I, I've actually seen massive change even with my mates because of, you know, we always take the piss out of each other. Um, and I actually think what I love about that is that, whilst the men's rights activists, the bad kind of ones were controlling, say maybe some men's issues, I feel that changing the male culture and you speaking about masculinity, the voices there were actually um, hard, hard to kind of say without being um, seeming offensive, but they weren't your traditional masculine men. So they were um, probably not in that inner circle as much and more, were more critical versus understanding. Um, and they'd be like, Oh, you know, you shouldn't, 
be mean to anyone. And you kind of go, well, that's not going to ever stop. Um, and, and it shouldn't because of it builds camaraderie, it builds mateship. You know, you, you take the piss out of your mates because you feel comfortable and trust them and resilient. Um, but I think because no one had been talking about it, then no one knew where the boundaries were. And plus, I think more people are talking up about that. And plus too, econ economy, or I mean, joking, I should say, I can't even get the word out. But um, it kind of creates, like, I guess if you're doing the right manner, it kind of creates you to think about it too. With something like uh, you joke about, and like you can dive deeper and, and it's kind of cool to joke about it too because then it creates engagement about that conversation. Well, that's it. And, and I think more people are aware of the nuances of it. individual people will realise and kind of, oh, you know, I've noticed that you've been kind of making a bit of a joke about that every couple of times, but taking it offline, I always say that um, kind of the ones that were talking about emotional intelligence and talking about, you know, guys having their feelings and stuff, previously or a while ago was a bit more about just making men that um not understanding how it fits that fits into the culture where you kind of go like um and i'm starting to now see those balances coming in where you can okay, you can go to a barbecue still talk take the piss out of each other still talk about footy still have a couple of beers um but then know that those people you might just message and go hey mate look do you mind if we grab a coffee on tuesday versus the ones probably the narrative it used to be that you know guys are just instead of barbecues we should all be sitting around talking about feelings you got, you can balance it knowing when to do it and when not um and when to pull up boundaries when it's actually not being cool to talk about um i went through a divorce two years ago um and yeah i had to pull up pulled up boundaries on some of my friends and saying actually you know mate look it's still actually quite raw and the great feedback is that they then go, oh shit, sorry, like, you know, th that's cool. We won't do that now. Um, rather than probably ten years ago, it could have been like, oh, don't be, don't be such a pussy or something like that. So I think the, the it's, it's getting there. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing that I've started to do the shift to, and a lot of stuff I talk about is that you can find that balance with it all. That you can yeah. still go out, have that beer, have that fun, and then still have the serious talk, can still take life serious, and then still have fun. Because you need that kind of collaboration to have a good life or enjoy life, I should say. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and that's where it's not about um, you know, it's not about changing or flipping stuff around. You know, especially when you know masculinity, it's about going cool. What's the evolution? What do we want to keep? Why are we keeping that as well? Um, I think um, sometimes what we do can be misconstrued, as you said. You know, taking the piss. Why would you, like people going Australia? Why do what are you? take the piss out of your mates like because of we trust each other we feel comfortable with each other it's a bonding experience for um for each other and just understanding that's why it is can be quite beautiful um and you find that balance and sometimes you're going to be you know 70 30 50 50 and then and flip it sometime you know when and i think that's um more and more the conversation especially around men's mental health is that um you know, sometimes you can be good and sometimes you can be bad and just understanding that with guys where they'll go, the boundaries are there. It's just being able to recognise that too and it's when to have those serious conversations and being able to create those safe spaces to have those conversations. No, 100%. And understanding that, I guess, with the groups, with, within groups of guys, everyone is different. Um, you've got... You, um, stuff that you connect with, and that's I guess kind of like the with the monobike is let's just bond amongst what we've got together, but then understand each other's differences. That you know, in a group of team blokes, you're going to get some that are overly sensitive, some that are a little bit more, um, but some that just generally aren't, and that's fine. Um, if you know, but they need to understand that if someone is overly sensitive and they're not, then even though you don't, even though you're not sensitive you've still got to be watch out for that guy because if he's going to take things a little bit too personal um, or during that time, he's going to be a bit more sensitive and create that space for him. I definitely. That's a good point to point out. Cause I do see that a lot that I guess with a lot of guys I hang out with, there's no like guess respectful boundaries. Cause we all think we're kind of, I guess the same kind of thing. And we don't realize that some are more sensitive than others kind of thing. Like I, hey. yep. So go. No, no, yeah, I was going to say, and it's, um, it's because we've, we've all, understanding we've all got different histories, we've all got different triggers, we've all got um, different ways of dealing with stuff. Um, so, that, you know, and it's just, 
I love, and as you can see on my page, I love quotes. And um, you, it's just, to me, I'm massive on empathy because it just shows that you don't need a reason why that triggers someone. But if you understand that it does, then you can respect that and go, okay, well, you know, we're not going to touch. And so for me, it was divorce, you know, and then now I don't, now I can give a shit. Like, you know, it will take the piss out of myself and my mates do it all the time with that. Um, but at that stage, it was triggering. Um, and just, yeah, being able to communicate that. So. Yeah, so um, I guess when, I guess how I would ask this question, especially for people that are listening, is like, how do you create these safe spaces, I guess, for men to be open about this stuff? or have these engaging conversations? Um, two ways. One is just um, communication. So is, uh, I think the second thing is communication. The first thing is just changing that culture um, by breaking down barriers and just having, I mean, so I guess communication with the one is having those discussions to guys and being like, um, this is why I feel this way. And this is why it's important to have safe space um, at times and why it's useful and why you might need it and then have that communication to them that you we haven't grown up being told this we haven't grown up as a culture where they go okay as a boy we need to teach you this or you're going to be around an area or an environment that you're going to have this so as a generation as just in guys in society we just need to learn it and just understand that if people get it wrong, there's no, that's no problem because you're learning. Um, and I, I think that's where the communication from guys to guys, because of for maybe females who uh, are brought up in a more empathetic culture or, you know, being in, encouraged with that. Sometimes you'll get the whole, Oh, you know, but like I'm 36, you know, Oh, but you're a 36 year old guy. You should know empathy. I'm like, well, but why? ages than anything if i'm growing up in a culture or an environment where empathy isn't something that's normal then i'm not going to know that um so just going to guys and saying look this is going to be new for us and it's going to benefit us and it's not going to make you any less of a man it's not going to make you in any different it's actually evolving and i think the masculine side of it is you're going to grow and become better as a person and guys want to grow and be, be better. You're, this isn't making you weaker. This is actually making you stronger. Um, and then un, so that you can understand that once you can like have that dialogue with guys, then that a lot of them are like, Oh cool. You know, this is making me stronger. I'm a pathetic. Um, and then, and do it, this do it with your mates and just show them why it is. Um, a lot of them, you know, we're not as much theoretical like theory people. So it's be vulnerable have that safe space for guys, tell them what you're going through and then they can see it. They can experience it and they can go, shit, that actually does work rather than theoretically you've told me that that kind of works, but I don't believe it. You just, you just go yeah. and do it. hundred percent. And so even like, I guess I'm kind of, I wouldn't say lucky, but like I kind of have a more of an understanding of, I guess, emotions. Cause I, I had a similar upbringing. Like I grew up in just a female environment. So I've always been like confused of how to be a male or like, you know, be a man yeah. or whatever. So, but it's it comes down to I've always had an easier understanding of how to, I guess, express emotions and so forth. And it's also when you are expressing those emotions, I notice too you explain them, and then a lot more guys kind of get it. They're like, "Oh, yeah. I feel that way too. I'm not the only one," kind of thing. Yep. And, and I think that explanation um, is massive as well because of a lot of guys they. Is that you know, growing up, we're not taught to express our emotions, so it's not something we're good at doing. And when someone like yourself or myself or others can verbally explain an emotion that we're deeply feeling, that's when people go, Oh, well, that's how I would have wanted to have said it if I knew how to say it. Um, and they may not be able to then redo it, but they, they kind of go, oh, Okay, cool, now I'm learning how to talk about my emotions, um, rather than just. Yeah, look, we're not great. At, we're not great community. We haven't been brought up in that culture, and that's you know we're a victim of that. Um, out of anything is that yeah you know we haven't had those life skills. But yeah, as you said, as soon as you start communicating it with guys, that a lot of them will go. Actually, I feel the same way, or I didn't realise it. So, 
It's like even I guess with myself too, that's something I struggle a lot with is with communication and being able to, I guess, fully communicate it to people. Because I still have that a little bit of that stigma of growing up, say, in a footy environment, being at school and all that kind of stuff. So you get kind of taught to shove it in a box and kind of like man up. Yeah. And that's the that's the cultural thing that I was, the, the social conditioning thing that I was that I'm quite quite passionate about because of my view is that the you, you gravitate towards the loud, the loudness, or the, and it's often the loud minority. I think guys have been affected by the loud minority, um, which, if through insecurity mainly, a lot of guys that can't um, communicate their feelings um, will then they'll place they won't place any value on that, and if they if they don't want you to communicate your feelings because of then you're above them in skill set or skill level. So what they'll end up doing is they want to make a call to not have any feelings because that's their strength. So they, and that's when you go through those cultural things that if no one's standing up as a bloke that you can look up to and saying, have you know, knowing your feelings is still cool and manly to do. And the only person that's kind of like talking about what masculinity is, is the one that's shutting down his emotions, you know, not having any, any feelings or, um, not communicating with them and pretending that communication isn't cool, then that's the one that you everyone's going to listen to growing up. And then that's how you build a culture a, a, as you go. So um, I guess, you know, through what you're doing, and that's why I wanted to coin the term the modern bloke. So kind of coming up, 17-year-olds, 16-year-olds, or anyone that's really vulnerable can go, okay, I'm starting to learn. Let's start looking above what we're going what, what does being a man mean? And um if I've now got the choice, I can see visibly guys being um, emotionally intelligent and guys not being emotionally intelligent. At least now I've got the choice. Um, versus then if, you know, people that are emotionally intelligent are silent, then they're always going to gravitate towards that um, guy that's shutting out his emotions. I guess that's, yeah, true. And plus too, being a guy, you get taught to be really competitive. And I guess like one of the ways to be competitive, if you can't beat them, you shut them down. No, exactly. Yeah, and, and that's that's exactly right. Um, and we are, and, you know, we are quite competitive. It is a that is a masculine trait. Um, whereas we don't think about as much of each other and as the collective um, versus probably women think more of the collective. And that's something that we kind of having these discussions need to go cool. That can be good in sometimes because we want to be the first to the moon. You know, we want to be the first to get the cure for coronavirus. Um, you know, there, there was a lot of things where the competitiveness um, side of the masculine trait, like women and obviously have the masculine trait as well in that. But we've also, we, I don't think anyone really deals with, okay, well, how can it negatively affect us? And let's just not be blindsided by that and realize that. It can also be a very negative factor too, especially in relationships and arguments and stuff because of having that competitive nature. You always want to win. No, massive. And, and same thing is if you're, uh, and that's a massive thing with, with relationships is if you're growing up in a culture where you don't think about things or analyze things or feel your emotions and you're, all you want to do is be competitive against your, against your partner, that's shit. <laughs> like, um, but it's understandable why that's going to be a problem with the larger society because we haven't grown up having those discussions where, you know, um, and, and I always say, that's why I said with giving people benefit of the doubt is that, um, and I look at it as more of a cultural thing um, is I can go into footy club or, you know, any, any area, obviously we, we've played footy and, and it's stereotypical. So we just talk about that. And the jokes might be about, you know, oh, who communicates with the missus, bugger that type thing, or, you know, all, all the typical kind of bravado and, you know, it's not cool to, you know, have it. But then if you then say you had a hundred people in that room that all kind of, agreed with that because of everyone else was saying it. <laughs> so I don't want to be the, you know, everyone wants to be cool. Everyone, everyone's saying it. And that's what we came up with. And as a 17 year old going to the footy club, that's what the guys were joking about. So that's my mentality. I've got to have culturally. But if you took all those hundred people and sat them down individually, major, vast majority of them would probably say they've got a good relationship with the missus or they want to communicate better with the missus or they do, or they love, you know, um, and it, it's the ones and that's the irony is that then you get them all together and they just deny it. <laughs> yeah. It's funny that you say that too, because I used to, I guess with my 
previous partner too, like I used to do the same thing with my mates and I used to walk away from those conversations and think, why did I say that? And it's like, yeah. you're getting courage to like, you know, bring it up and all that. You go, you go into the vortex and, and it's understandable. And that's where, um, as I said, the, the change, because I've done some talks with some sporting clubs and um, that's actually, you know, some stuff that I want to do further, but is when I think the people talking at doing this um, five, 10 years ago, we're more coming in and going, right, guys, we want to change your football culture. Everyone's got to be hugging everyone and talking about their feelings all the time. And you must all be really good communicate, communicators with you know, women. And we're probably going to stop drinking anymore because of um, this. And, you know, we're no tackling at football anymore um, because of, you know, there's a little bit two boys will be boys too rough and just really water. And, and culturally, especially, and this why I always never understood and was frustrating is, you're literally saying that the culture is that arrogance, that bravado, that toxic side of the, the masculinity, that ignorance, that, you know, rejection, that who gives a shit about you think. And the theory is to then go in and shame them and pander them and, you know, condescend to them. And you kind of go, well, of course, they're not going to listen to you. You've just told me that, that <laughs> the, the, their personality is someone who is going to tell you to plug off. And then you get, so my view is, okay, well, let's work with that personality and go in and go, mate, you know, you can still have jokes, have muck around, just understand the boundaries. You can still, you know, have drinks, you can still do everything you fun. but why don't we add respect? We're not taking anything away. Why don't we add respect and kind of go, well, um, you know, why don't we add emotional intelligence and talking and, you know, just um, those type of type of things, you know, why, do, why doesn't the coach have a specific discussion around um, the safety for um, a safe space, you know, to talk to their players about because of, you know, he's the coach. And if yeah. the coach does it, then it goes down. It doesn't mean that he's any less of a fo good footy player. It doesn't mean that he's any less of a man. Um, he just understands, you know what, with 100 blokes in a footy club, people are going to go through a lot of shit a lot of time. So why don't we talk about it here? It's very good. Like, have a bit. Yeah, that's it. You're always going to have that. <laughs> It's very good that you pointed out too. It's like, instead of like trying to take it away and saying it like all of it's a bad thing, let's try and add things onto it and so yeah. forth. Which is and, and that's, it's my thing with masculinity is, masculinity is fucking awesome. <laughs> like femininity is awesome. You know, it's not a, yeah. and I go, there's so much great things about the male culture, um, especially Aussie male culture. Um, but what we need to realize is we're not, we shouldn't be shamed into the bad things. But let's acknowledge it. Let's have those discussions and let's just go, you know, it's a good time to just think, should we have that in that culture? Um, and what's something that's missing? If we add this in, is it going to benefit guys as a whole? And those discussions where you kind of go, look, we're probably going to keep 80% of it, but um, is there something like joking about, um, you know, disrespect towards your partner? Is that something that we keep in? And I, I reckon that break down the walls and have the honest conversations where people are allowed to say whatever they want. Most guys would just go, you know what? Probably not. Um, and you go, cool. Well, look, you know, let's just work on stop doing that. Um, and my thing is the answer that you often get where they go, oh, I'm just joking. You know, I'm just, oh, we're just mucking around. You know, the boys know that I love my wife or whatever. And you go, that might be true to the ones you talk to, but you're impressed. You're, um, there's a lot of impressionable people that may not. And they may not, unless you have those, whereas, and that's where the risk is. Um, whereas, yeah, a lot of people go, oh, okay, cool, I get that. So maybe I will rethink what I say or how I talk and um, because of some people might get it the wrong way and be proud to, um, you know, to, have, to, to love my partner or um, whatever, you know, whatever the, the issue is and go, okay, well, let's get rid of that. But talking why well, do i want to talk well, well talking actually you know it's going to help you guys get through a lot of stuff and create that space and we're going to reduce suicides mm. okay well let's add that in yeah cool we'll yeah. Keep, add that in not yeah. not you know let, not not let's start from the start so, well, you know we've got what about um you know what about having a couple of beers okay well you know responsible di um drinking is great that's fine it relaxes it we'll keep that one you know <laughs> type thing what about uh, doing stupid shit Oh, yeah, but it's funny. It is funny, but there's a lot of people. Who, okay, well, let's let's do stupid shit, but not stupid shit that's going to get us really injured. Yeah. Um, 
I always say that the, the masculinity with, I did a post saying, you know, stop making stupid shit cool. Um, and it's because doing stupid shit, it's fine. It's fun. But the masculinity side of that is taking risks, but risks, which are calculated. So I look and go, you know, if someone's going pushing the limits on, you know, doing something on a, on a motorbike or something like that, or, you know, drag racing in a legal street, fine. Absolutely fine. You know, you're taking your risks. You've, you've done your training. Yeah, cool. You're pushing the limits and yeah, cool. You know, it's, you could consider it a stupid, dangerous thing that people go, oh, bloody, look at the bloody guys doing burnouts again or, you know, doing, um, you know, so, like doing all the racing and stuff. But the stupid stuff is when they do it illegally or when they do it dangerously, when they're not wearing seatbelts, when they're not, t- when they're, they're, and you kind of go, that's not cool because of, that's not what a man does. A man doesn't do stupid risks <laughs> like, um, and having those conversations. Man. Um, yeah. You're on the ball with that too. I, yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Explained <laughs> really well, but yeah. Um, we'll wrap it up on this question, man. What's no, no, go for it. Yeah. What does being a man mean to you? It's a hard one. And now I think, um, We've asked it in a lot of talks, a lot of groups, a lot of workshops. Um, it's it, to me, it's improving, um, understanding yourself. I think a bit more and really doing what fits your values uh, and, and doing what your com- what what you think is right, regardless of what that is. Um, if you're doing something for the wrong reasons then to me that's not as much being a man i think it's doing things for the right reasons if you can if you do anything and i can be like mate what did you do that for and you can explain to me why then you're doing it for the right reasons and and, and to me you keep doing that all the time and yeah society will be better that's yeah 100 percent, man i perfectly agree that aligns with a lot what i would say too man but yeah thank you for coming <laughs> yeah thank you for coming on hey Cheers, man. So good, man. Cheers for watching today's episode today, guys. I want to give a massive shout out to Conscious Community Brisbane. Make sure you go check out their Facebook page and Instagram page for me. Um, give us a like if you liked today's episode, guys. Uh, tell us what you think in the comments below or send us a me a DM. And if you think a friend will get a lot of value out of this episode, share it with them. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a good one, guys.